Hi, apologies for the lack of videos recently. I've been really busy with this solar panel project at home. Uh, uh, in a video probably about a year ago now, you saw the state of my roof. It was covered in moss and that kind of stuff from some of the trees nearby. So I've had to clear all that off and uh, we're installing the solar panels. I've installed some battery storage and the inverter and all that stuff. So uh, if there is interest, um, I'll be able to do an overview of the system that I've installed, but that's been taking up all of my time recently. But now we should be able to get back to the usual schedule of videos and also get back to some of the projects that we were working on before, like the homemade flyback converter. But the focus of today's video is this car diagnostic scanner. It's the Xtool IP616, and this was sent to me directly by Xtool. And this is a car diagnostic tool. In fact, let's just turn it on and get it booting up. So this is a car diagnostic tool for sort of the serious home DIYer and possibly for the professional that's just starting out. It's coming in at about £330, so a little bit more expensive than the basic tools, but this one has quite a lot of functionality. So first it allows you to communicate with all of the modules in your vehicle and read and or clear um, the diagnostic trouble codes, but also it allows you to read the live data from all of those modules. So if you want to know what's going on uh, with, a, with the various modules, you can look at the data that's actually going on. So if you want to look at what's going on with the alarm or the body control module or the tyre pressure monitoring system or something like that, then you can do that with this tool. It's also got some special functions here, 31 special functions. So those include things like a gearbox reset, ABS bleeding, uh, DPF forced regeneration, uh, resetting the oil service light. So all of those types of uh, reset functions. The one thing really that it's missing that separates it from the more expensive tools is the bi-directional control. So unfortunately this one doesn't have bi-directional controls, meaning, uh, for example, one that you might want to use would be if you've got a misfire, you might want to activate or deactivate certain cylinders so you can find out which cylinder uh, is causing the problem. Uh, so this one can't do things like that. It can't activate solenoids and valves. Uh, you'd need a more professional tool to do that, but it can do just about everything else. And it does, uh, you can see we've got some updates here, but this one has lifetime updates. So there's no subscription fee or anything like that to pay. You pay you £330 up front for the module, and then you're able to have updates for the entire life of the unit. So that's quite nice. And it's got this seven inch touch screen on the front, which seems pretty responsive. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and you do need that Wi-Fi connection to do any updates or anything like that but you don't seem to need that Wi-Fi connection to actually use the device. So some of the other devices need uh, to connect to the internet to make sure that you've got a subscription or whatever. That isn't needed on this device. It will just work when you turn it on. So uh, we've got this quite rugged tablet device. It's got a speaker on the back and a couple of connectors on the top. So it's got a USB-A connector, which will infuriate some people. This actually um, is for the charging of the unit because this has a built-in battery. Uh, and then we've got the connection off to the OBD2 port. So if we look in the hard case here, we actually have a cable that goes off to the OBD2 port uh, that goes to that D-sub connector. Uh, so this one doesn't have Bluetooth, which means that you are tethered to the OBD2 port. It probably means that you can only really use this while sat in the driver's seat, so you can't go into the engine bay and start reading stuff. Uh, but that's pretty much par for the course for this kind of price range device. So uh, you're tethered, but it does mean that the whole time that you're plugged into the vehicle, you are actually keeping that battery charged and you can keep your diagnostic session going on for uh, as long as you're uh, able to, you know, because the battery won't go flat in here, it will keep it charged up. But in the box, we do have a USB charger. We've got a USB-A to USB-A cable. Uh, that um, connector to connect to the OBD2 port, as well as a couple of adapters uh, to allow you to use this device in the US and in Europe. Doesn't look like it's got one for Australia, but I think there's probably a version available there. And then it comes in this um, vacuum molded case to keep it protected, which means that you could store this quite safely in the garage or something like that without risk of damaging the tablet. So the tablet itself is pretty well made. We've got these rubber... Um, handles on it. It would be nice to see a cliff on there so you can sit it on top of the steering wheel or something like that, but it seems pretty well made. It's quite a nice looking tablet, uh, but all of the magic really 
is in the software. So let's go and take it to the car and plug it in and see what it can do. Right, so we're hooked up to the car's OBD2 port down there. And you may be able to see there, this is actually charging this device now. So although you can charge it from the USB port, which is useful if you want to do some updates to the device, um, if you are using it in the vehicle for an extended period of time, because it has this cable connection, then it will actually charge the battery in this unit. And you'll see also, it's saying that there's some updates available. There are free updates available for life for this unit. So I'm going to scroll down. Um, I think there is one for BMW, so I'll quickly update the firmware on here. Uh, we could do all of them, but it might take a while. So let's just let it do that, and I'll come back to you in just a moment. All right, so we've got it updated, and we've got a couple of options here. We can either go into Diagnosis or Auto Scan. So Auto Scan just goes straight in, tries to communicate with the car, read the VIN, and then work out uh, what vehicle it is to connect to. Or if you click on Diagnosis, uh, you can choose manually what vehicle it is that you're trying to communicate with. So we'll just go to Auto Scan because that's easiest. And this is pretty quick. On many of the other scan tools that I've tested in the past, the auto scan seems to take quite a while, but this one is pretty much done in about 30 seconds or so. And then we can go to automatic or system diagnostic. So this one allows you to choose uh, specific modules to talk to. Or we can just go to automatic and it will go through and check all of the modules that are connected. It will tell you if you've got any errors with any of those. In this case, uh, we haven't got any errors at the moment on this car. Uh, but we can still go to each of the individual systems. So let's say we want to have a look at the DME on this BMW. That's the engine management unit. We can click on diagnosis. We can read the details about the DME. So it's got all of the version information, that kind of stuff, the hardware version. We can read fault codes, which in this case we haven't got any. Uh, and if we did have fault codes, assuming we'd fixed the issue, then we can clear the code. And then we can go through and read the data streams. And what we've got is all of the data streams that we can read. So that just goes through and queries which ones are available. And you can see we've got them all here, along with the actual value as it stands right now but they have also grouped them into some useful groups. So uh, we can have a look here at the air-fuel ratio. And it's got the air-fuel ratio uh, that says it's, uh, enter the working state, I think means it's in a closed loop and it's working. But we've got all of the O2 sensor data here, as well as the fuel trims. Now, one nice thing about this particular tool is, and you'll also notice it's really quite responsive on the touchscreen, but you can select up to eight different uh, data streams to plot on a single graph. So we can click on custom, and then that narrows it down to those ones that you've selected. But you can also uh, put them on individual graphs, as you can see here. So it's plotting those together. But you can also go through and combine it onto one single graph, and that puts them all together on this graph here. And you can zoom in and out with the um, X and Y buttons just here. But that's really useful because a limitation on some of the other scan tools is the ability to plot so many different data streams at the same time. Now, on some of my other vehicles, I've often been asked about uh, communication with some of the other modules in the vehicle. For example, the transmission. A lot of people like to do their own transmission fluid changes. And on many of the vehicles, it needs specific operating parameters in order to do the final top up of fluid. So you can go through read fault codes, clear them if needed, uh, read the information about the transmission as well, but you can also read the data streams, which includes things like the temperature, often includes things like uh, the oil level as well. So for example, uh, just here, we've got the transmission oil temperature at 62 degrees C, so obviously too hot uh, to do a top up there. We've got the engine oil temperature, battery voltage, uh, and some of the details about what's actually going on inside the transmission. So you can do that with any of the modules in the vehicle that it was able to communicate, which should be um, all of them basically. Uh, so you can go through and read any of them there. Uh, also quite useful, uh, you can read the alarm system and the previous causes for what 
caused an alarm which can be quite useful. So we went into automatic diagnosis before that read all of the modules but we can go into system diagnostics instead and just pick a specific module to talk to that's a little bit quicker than doing the auto scan so for example if we wanted to talk to the DME here it doesn't have to go through and scan for every module we can just go straight there uh, and then read the data streams so that's the diagnostics so this centre section here is where you'll spend most of your time diagnosing vehicles. That's what we just looked at, so reading fault codes, clearing fault codes, and reading the operating parameters of the vehicle. Now what you will notice is missing is bidirectional controls, which unfortunately this doesn't support. So if you were having a problem with a misfire, uh, for example, you wouldn't be able to do cylinder deactivation on each of the cylinders to work out uh, which cylinder is at fault. That isn't unfortunately supported on this unit, but there are special functions available uh, which are additional functions which might be useful for certain tools for example uh, you can see the list here we've got um, tire pressure monitoring system reset and um, you can change some of the details to do with the vehicles so you can set up the ecu configurations and that kind of thing uh, we can also uh, if you had an electric vehicle you could do some stuff to do with the hv battery and also uh, gearbox stuff and gear learning as well um, particular interest on this vehicle is things like the electronic pump activation so if you have changed the coolant in the vehicle uh, this vehicle has an electronic cooling pump and it does have an autoblastic bleeding procedure so if we go through to here I think we'll have to stop the engine uh, but if we go through to Europe and BMW and then here it says uh, it will take about 12 minutes and then we've got all of these steps that we need to take to do the pump bleeding. So uh, turn on the ignition switch, high beams, set the cooling system as uh, needed. Uh, and then interestingly, step six is fully depress the accelerator pedal for 10 seconds and don't start the engine. So that is actually the manual step for bleeding the pump anyway. So what this tool actually does is although you're doing this manually, it then on the next screen, gives you a readout of what's actually happening so you can have some insight as to what's going on to see whether the pump's actually working. And there's several other things like injector coding, airbag reset, so if you're repairing your vehicle after an accident for example uh, it's useful to be able to reset those functions that you can't do just by clearing codes. Now what you will notice is not all of these functions are available for every vehicle so for example here it's got a DPF forced regeneration that kind of thing we're in a petrol car here so if we went through to DPF it wouldn't actually let us perform that operation but generally speaking many of these are available for the majority of vehicles. So there we go that's the Xtool IP616 a really nice diagnostic tool and ideal if you're the kind of person like me that likes to do a little bit of work on their vehicles before the annual inspection on some of the other tools, you'd have to pay a subscription fee every year, which suddenly makes the tool quite expensive. This one, you buy your unit and you've got your updates for life. You don't need to worry about any subscription fees. So perfect for the avid DIYer. I'll put a link to this item in the description down below if you are interested in taking a look at it. If you've got any thoughts or comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section down below. And I'll see you in the next video where we're back doing some of our electronics projects. Thanks for watching.